On December 30, 1996, actor Jack Nance was found dead, lying on the bathroom floor of his apartment in South Pasadena, California. His autopsy showed he had a blood alcohol level of 0.24%. He'd been suffering from a severe headache, and this had led to a subdural hematoma. But how did this come to be? What were the circumstances that led to Jack Nance's untimely death at age 53? Let's learn about Jack's fascinating life and career and his mysterious death. Who was Jack Nance? Jack Nance was born Marvin John Nance on December 21, 1943 in Boston. He was raised in Dallas and began acting at a young age. He began touring around the U.S., partaking in children's theater. As an adult, he was involved with the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco for close to a decade. He focused on acting on stage for much of his early career. He later met filmmaker David Lynch while working in theater in Philadelphia. Lynch offered Jack Nance many opportunities to act in his projects in the coming years. Most of Jack's memorable roles are in David Lynch's film and TV projects. It was through his unique characters in David Lynch's surreal works that most of us know Jack Nance. But sadly, he lived a troubled and difficult life. He was an alcoholic for much of his adult life, and this caused troubles with his relationships. His first marriage was to actress Catherine Colston, who also often worked with David Lynch. They were married from 1968 to 76. They divorced because of Jack's unfortunate alcohol addiction. 1976 wasn't such a bad year for Jack, as this was also the year he began working on the film Eraserhead, which launched him to stardom among fans of midnight movies. Nevertheless, his alcohol addiction persisted and took its toll on his life. In later years, he had to ask his Blue Velvet co-star Dennis Hopper to help him while he was feeling depressed due to alcohol addiction. He eventually visited a rehab center to fight it. His other major trouble came from his second marriage. In 1991, he married Kelly Jean Van Dyke, daughter of actor Jerry Van Dyke and niece of Dick Van Dyke. Kelly Jean had a short-lived acting career, appearing in a couple episodes of the TV shows My Mother the Car and Accidental Family. She later turned to acting in pornographic films under the stage name Nancy Kelly. Kelly Jean also had her own mental instability, and sadly, Jack was never able to help her. On one night in November, six months after their wedding, Jack received a call from Kelly Jean. Jack was in Bass Lake, California, working on the film Meatballs 4. Kelly Jean was hysterical and threatened to commit suicide. Jack tried to console her and hoped to prevent her from attempting suicide. Unfortunately, a freak lightning storm knocked out the phone and power lines in Bass Lake. Jack and the film's director, Bobby Logan, searched frantically for a sheriff to help them reach Kelly Jean. They eventually broke into her apartment and found she had hanged herself. Before we tell you more about Jack Nance and his fascinating life and mysterious death, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Jack's acting career. Jack's first film role was as a hippie in a 1970 independent film called Fools, which starred Jason Robards and Catherine Ross. The following year, he had a supporting role in the film Jump, starring Tom Ligon and Logan Ramsay. But the film that made Jack one of the stars of independent cinema was his role as Henry Spencer in David Lynch's Eraserhead, released in 1977. The film was one of the several midnight movies that played in independent cinemas and appealed to a niche audience. Yet this audience was enough to recognize Jack's incredible talent. The film has an eerie atmosphere, and Jack's performance is truly one of the most unusual acting performances in the history of American cinema. After that role, he continued to get work in independent films. His notable film roles included work in Breaker Breaker, Ghoulies, Johnny Dangerously, Love and a 45, Voodoo, and Little Witches. A separate mention should be made of his collaborations with filmmaker David Lynch. After working on Eraserhead, he also had a role in Dune. His other roles in David Lynch films included ones in Blue Velvet, Wild at Heart, and Lost Highway. He had a few bit parts on popular TV shows and acted in the TV movie The Bet early on in his career. But his best-known TV work was as Pete Martell in David Lynch's iconic show Twin Peaks. He even appeared in an adult film entitled Old Fashioned Spankings, released in 1991. Jack's Mysterious Death Jack did manage to somehow fight his personal battles off camera. With the help of Dennis Hopper, who had just sobered up, Jack was able to check into rehab to fight his alcohol addiction. Later, Dennis cast Jack in his film Colors. But the suicide of his wife, Kelly Jean, must have haunted Jack until his death. The 90s were a troubled time for him. 
While it was arguably the decade where he did his best and most mainstream work, it was also the one that took its toll on him emotionally. Two years after his wife's suicide, he began drinking again. This time, he felt he couldn't stop. On December 29, 1996, Jack went to lunch with his friends Leo Bulgarini and Catherine Case. His friends noticed that Jack had a bruise beneath one of his eyes. When they pressed him on how he received it, he told them he was involved with a brawl outside a donut shop that day. He later excused himself and told his friends he had to go home and rest as he had a massive headache. This headache is what seems to have led to his succumbing to subdural hematoma. He was found dead in his apartment the next day. He was 53. The death remains a mystery, however, as the police weren't able to find much evidence about whether a brawl did indeed occur and, if it did, why Jack was involved. Jack Nance's Legacy Luckily, Jack's legacy is defined by his incredible acting and great film and TV work. While he had a few forgettable roles in forgettable B-movies, his career remains defined by his best works, particularly his work with David Lynch. To this day, his role as Henry Spencer in Eraserhead is a performance that's hard to describe, as is the film itself. Jack Nance is a favorite actor of any cinephile who loves midnight movies and surrealist works. His death was untimely, and one wishes we could see more of Jack Nance. Much of his personal life remains unknown to the average filmgoer, but for cult film fans, Jack Nance's legacy will live on. Part 17 of Twin Peaks The Return is dedicated to his memory. A documentary about his life entitled I Don't Know Jack was released in 2002. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think Jack Nance has received his due as a great character actor? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.